Is it true? Are we finally at the point where we can give patients a once weekly insulin injection? Keep watching to find out. Hi everybody, Mark Green here, the Diabetes Diet Guy, bringing you all things diabetes, healthy living, and general nutrition. Now, today is a big day because Eli Lilly, the pharmaceutical company, have been at it again. I recently blogged on their new GLP-1 agonist medication that is getting huge results. Just to mention that I have no affiliation with the company, it just so happens that they are the ones that are producing these medications. But one of the biggest stories in the diabetes world at the moment is the advent of a possible once weekly insulin injection. Now, obviously, one of the drawbacks of having to go on to insulin is the literal, the literal load of having to do an injection every day. It's not a pleasant experience, particularly if you have type one diabetes where you could be doing multiple daily injections um, and over time, that takes its toll. In fact, with type 2 diabetes, you can be doing multi, multiple daily injections. So it is a big pain for people day to day. Yes, it lowers glucose levels. And in the case of type 1 diabetes, it is literally a life force. But if we can lower the patient or the medication burden to patients, it can only be a good thing. So let's just look at what's been happening. So the insulin being studied at the moment is called Basal Insulin FC, which is kind of like some random football team that you might find in Switzerland, perhaps. But uh, Basal Insulin FC is the name that has been given. I'm sure if it ever came to market, and that's an important point, it's not to market yet. It's still very early days in terms of its um, clinical phases. But from what they have been doing in small numbers, hundreds of patients, they are finding that a once weekly injection of insulin is comparable or um, not inferior compared to the current insulins on the market. So this is often how they will study whether or not a new product, particularly insulin, is um, worthwhile bringing to market because ultimately the USP for this insulin is the frequency of which you need to take it. But you don't want to be taking it if it's inferior compared to what's already available. So you don't want people to have higher blood sugars as a result. So the goal here is to lower the patient burden, but achieve the same results. Obviously, if Lilly can do it in a way or a future or other pharmaceutical companies into the future can do it where it is superior to what's already available in the market, then you've got the best of both worlds. And that's probably when you start to corner the market. But this particular study looked at the insulins over a 32 week period, and it was conducted in 399 patients. Now the key thing is that this was conducted in patients with type two diabetes. So we, they haven't managed to extrapolate this to type one diabetes just yet, probably from a safety perspective, because obviously people with type one diabetes aren't producing any of their own insulin, and therefore if anything were to go wrong, it could be pretty catastrophic quite quickly. People with type 2 diabetes, on the other hand, are producing their own insulin and therefore um, have that background insulin coverage. So their glucose levels might be elevated for a period of time if it was inferior um, compared to what's currently on the market, but it's not necessarily catastrophic or fatal. So I think that's why they probably rolled it in, out in type 2 in the first instance. Plus type 2 diabetes is just a much larger market. So when we say this insulin was non-inferior, essentially what, we, what they tested was, did it reduce uh, blood glucose levels and HbA1c's similar to other insulins initiated? And the answer is yes. Significantly, they were both about the same. In terms of hypoglycemic occurrences, they were about the same. Now this is very early days, so we, we're probably a while off before we see this hit in the market. We're in phase two, so there's a few more phases to go through in terms of before we get it to market. I say we, I'm not involved at all once the companies can get it to the market. Um, but a very interesting development. So are there any downsides? Now, my concern is that patients on insulin often have variable glucose levels. So sometimes you need a bit more insulin, sometimes you need a bit less. Ultimately, it's something that requires a bit of fine tuning and your requirements can vary day to day, depending on what's happening in your body and what you're doing on that day. So I'd be interested to see how the adjustment of this insulin would work, particularly if you're only taking it once weekly, let's say that the dose is off, um, or it needs a bit more fine tuning 
typically what would happen is you would adjust it daily or by daily until you found the right dose that's working for you. Whereas with this type of insulin, you're only gonna be able to adjust it weekly, which could mean that you're running suboptimal glucose levels for quite some time before you can actually get the dose that is appropriate for you. Now, the problem is as well, is that when you hit the appropriate dose and your glucose levels steady out, it only takes an infection, an illness, um, taking up some exercise or something to that effect, where now you don't need as much insulin or you need more insulin. And so we're back into that adjustment period which is then gonna take a long period of time. So I'd be really interested as and when this insulin comes to market, or if it comes to market, to see the guidance on how you would adjust it as opposed to the previous insulins that are generally day to day. Even the newer insulins that have come to market in recent years, like Traceba, which is a long lasting insulin, it lasts about 42 hours in your system, but you still take it once a day to adjust it it takes about three days before it reaches a steady state in your system. So that's great if you want stability um, and your dose is correct. But when we see patients, for example, in hospital, where the situation is rapidly moving, actually it can be a bit of a hindrance because we make an adjustment, it hasn't worked, but we don't quite know if it's not worked because it takes three days before it hits a steady state. So often what we'll do is we'll move to a once daily insulin that is a shorter duration, like your typical Levomir, Lantus, Abazagla, um, amongst others, that you can adjust a bit more rapidly because the situation is um, more of a moving situation. So it would be interesting to see how, how they approach that and what the guidance will be, but we're getting ahead of ourselves really. And that's it guys, hope you found that useful. Remember, if you did find it useful, hit the subscribe and like buttons, it helps us out a lot pushes us up that uh, YouTube algorithm, which means we can get in front of more people. If you want more education and advice about how to manage your diabetes, look at the other videos on this channel or check out diabetesdietguide.com where we've got all the information there for you and we're always adding to it um, week by week. So we'll leave it there guys and we will see you later.